Hello, everyone, and welcome to Aging Well with 50 Forward and Dr. Amy Price Neff from Mindstream Integrative Medicine. I'm Kelsey Mahaffey, the All of Us Project Director for 50 Forward, located in Nashville, Tennessee. Today's program is brought to you by 50 Forward, which is a national community engagement partner for the All of Us Research Program. All of Us is a research program from the National Institutes of Health seeking to advance precision medicine. They're looking for 1 million people from diverse backgrounds living in the United States to volunteer and share their health data, helping researchers find better treatments and cures for all of us. More than 500,000 have enrolled so far, and you can learn more by visiting our website at joinallofus.org 50 forward. With me also today is, of course, the lovely Dr. Amy Price Neff and Keith Richardson, our 50 Forward All of Us Outreach Coordinator. Welcome, Dr. Amy, and hi, Keith. Hey, good morning. Hey. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, Dr. Neff. Hey, Keith. Hey, Kelsey. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, and a big welcome to the autumn season as well, too. November is National mm. Family Caregivers Month. 15 million Americans provide unpaid care for an adult, but caring for yourself is one of the most important things you can do as a caregiver. As usual, Dr. Neff has put together a presentation for this discussion today, and today's event is being pre-recorded, so we won't be able to make a live questions at the end. For those watching on Facebook, you can place the questions in the comment section on your screen, and we'll do our best to answer them later. Dr. Neff, welcome back. And as always, thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. I just love my monthly date with you guys. Really appreciate the chance to connect and be part of your community and the 50 Forward community. Um, so today we're talking about caregiver support, National Family Caregiver Support Month. Um, it's a subject that's very near and dear to my heart. So I was ex excited to be able to, to go into this. You know, as usual, it's um, knowing uh, each of you, Kelsey and Keith, as we've gotten to, to know one another over, over our work together, um, I'm eager to hear some of your responses around caregiving. Um, so as you already said, Keith, you know, 15 million Americans give some kind of caregiver support that's unpaid. Um, some statistics actually put that number at like 90 million Americans um, providing caregiver support. And, you know, we just can kind of name like who those caregivers are and what caregiver roles can look like. Um, there, um, we'll get into it in a minute, but there was a, um, there was a tool that's on the Tennessee Respite Coalition's website that's like a quiz. So like, how do I know if I'm a caregiver? <laughs> And it seems kind of crazy that you would have to ask that, but even for myself, you know, as a, as a support system for my spouse with cancer, um, I did not put a caregiver label on myself until I was mostly through making this talk, you know? Um, and then I, then I started to recognize it. And I think part of the difficulty in recognizing it is you can start to process emotions around what you're, what you're giving up as a caregiver. You give up your time, you know, you give up your, um, a lot of freedom. And, and it's, a, it's bittersweet because of course you're giving care to someone that you want to care for. Um, and in spite of that, it's still hard. So let me get on the share screen thing and, um, and get this show on the road. <laughs> um, yes. All right. So um, here we are, caregiver support and how to care for caregivers. So this is pretty fun to um, to talk about. Um, this uh, picture is of some very dear friends of mine, Anne Overton and Karen Overton. And Karen and Anne, I will show you the life work that they gave in support of um, Karen's dad, Ned, in a minute. Um, but anyways, what is this thing? What is this? Who is a caregiver? Um, 
you know, and what questions come up for us in our caregiving role. So caregivers, you know, basically are people who lend support to friends and family um, who can't perform those roles for themselves. Um, so real classic examples of people who need care. You know, sometimes um, people are born uh, who, were, who are going to have lifelong disabilities. Um, sometimes um, people are injured and from the point of injury forward, um, they are gonna need assistance in providing uh, you know, themselves with care. Um, for, for those of us um, with children, you know, our children require caregiving. Um, there are many things that a child may think they can do for themselves, but they can't. Um, and then also with aging parents um, or parents, friends, and partners, and children who are going through acute illness, you know, that sometimes need us to step up, but that, but that care won't necessarily last forever. Um, so caregiving can feel pretty overwhelming because sometimes you're giving care to someone with some pretty complicated um, health needs, um, particularly if it's around health. A person's needs could also be non-health related. It could be financial, it could be social or relational. Um, and so in, in, in each of these instances, um, we as a caregiver may be called upon to do things that are outside of our uh, area of comfort. Um, and when we look around, we may not have anybody that we can identify that could perform that role for the person. Um, so, so within the role of caregiver, uh, we can think about sometimes having some strong feelings about having to perform that role. Um, you know, and what I would hope that you could take away from this conversation today is that when you start to recognize in your role as caregiver, resentments showing up, those resentments can have teeth in them, right? The teeth can be things like they make you, not only do you have feelings about having to provide care, but then you feel guilty about having the feelings that you're feeling. And, and I just want to kind of name the fact that that stuff is normal. <laughs> it's normal and it doesn't make you a bad person. Um, and when you feel those feelings, it's an invitation to start to look for assistance. Um, so, you know, let's just name the fact that sometimes we can love the person but not love the work. Um, Often people who are caregivers are giving this care in addition to having a full-time job or a part-time job or other caregiver roles. You know, they call um, people in their 40s and 50s the sandwich generation because they are caregiving for children and caregiving for aging parents. Um, and, you know, we are particularly now more than ever um, as individuals who live in a society where we may let, be less connected to our neighbors, um, less connected with people physically and mostly online, we have a hard time feeling supported. Um, and so we have to, as, as part of this journey, find ways to connect with others. Um, here we go. So this <laughs> adorable shot is something that you may see at the wrist right now. So Anne and, um, and Karen Overton, um, Anne is the parent of Karen's twin sister, Virginia, who is an artist. And Virginia has a show at the Frist right now called Saved. And this is an image from the show. And this is Ned Overton. And he had gone to New York in 2016 to take in a show that Virginia had um, at, a, at a gallery in New York City. And uh, this was, the, this was the, the piece of art. You know, it's basically a ham from Karen's farm. And Ned is, is looking at the, uh, at the piece and what you can maybe start to feel in your own body is like, doesn't look like he's looking at the piece, you know? And so this was Ned who had advanced dementia at the time. And there's just a level of confusion that we all, you know, as friends and family of, of the Overtons um, experienced, you know, as, as Ned slowly succumbed to, to dementia. Um, and, you know, and he was a beloved uh, member of the family and of, of the broader community. 
um, who, you know, went on a long um, downhill decline that required a lot of care, especially towards the end. Um, so, so within National Family Caregivers Month, the um, organizations and administration for uh, community living put out something called the RAISE campaign. So I thought this would make a really great um, way to um, kind of define what caregiver support looks like. And this RAISE campaign stands for Recognize, Assist, Include, Support, and Engage. Um, so let's start just with the idea of recognizing. So just like I said, you know, I took this quiz on what it means to be a caregiver and it dawned on me at the moment that I actually was a caregiver, you know, and so what makes you a caregiver? Um, you know, it is that you provide care for someone who couldn't accomplish that work without you. Um, and it can be overwhelming. Sometimes caregiving can be very sudden. Um, Sometimes it can be subtle, um, but as you kind of start to look at it, you realize you're actually doing a whole lot and you don't know how to get help or get out of it. Um, what, what's on this slide is, you know, kind of a list that's available from the um, Caregiver Action Network of tools that you could have at your disposal, basically to help simplify and organize the type of care that you're giving. So for instance, if you're the caregiver that is um, working with grandchildren, a grandparent raising a grandchild, and you're having to do things like the well child visits and all the paperwork for school and things like that, then you can, you can get some support with that. Um, if you have an adult child with disabilities or you have aging parents, um, particularly things like Alzheimer's, um, you become an extension of the healthcare community as a caregiver, having to recognize when symptoms arise. And that can be overwhelming if you don't know what to look for. So there are, it although it can feel almost like a punishment, there are tools that are at your disposal that can help you perform this role, maybe even simplify the role. And then as we get a little further into the talk, um, help you identify ways to get um, help. Um, so uh, asking for assistance. So within the caregiver community, there are ideas around um, kind of like support, regular support. So let's say you're caregiving for a parent with Alzheimer's and you have a regular nursing assistant, home health agency that's coming in to provide additional support like with um, bathing and showering um, with, uh, you know, your ability to go and run errands. That is a very different thing than respite care. So respite care is something that is not, not typically um, done on a weekly basis um, or, or a regular basis, but it is special for you. And it's, and, and it's, it's really about the caregiver. Respite is for you, the caregiver, not to just like do the errands that are required in order to like accomplish routine care for your um, for your person that you're providing the care for, but it's really for you to restore. Um, and so respite care could be that you are typically caring for your parent and you want to go and see like your child graduate. You know, and so you're going to have respite care options for that event um, so that your person can be safe while you go and do these things that are a part of your life that you shouldn't have to miss. Um, you know, one conundrum uh, about respite care and actually just supportive assistance on a routinely or on a routine basis is how how do we pay for these things? So, for instance, Medicare pays for home health to come in and do uh, routine um, care, you know, for showering, bathing, um, you know, assisting with medical services, but Medicare does not pay for respite. And so um, there are things available here in Nashville and Tennessee in general um, called vouchers that can help you to pay for respite care or provide that for yourself. 
And so if you're looking for that, I don't know if 50 Forward has programs to kind of help people identify options locally. Kelsey, do you know? We do. We have uh, supportive care services where people can mm -hmm. um, link with us and have any sort of questions that we'd be able to link them to those resources. And then we also have our 50 Forward Friends Adult Day Services Program, um, which is mm -hmm. a great Monday through Friday option. Um, you mm -hmm. can come one day, you can come five days. Uh, it's very flexible around the schedule. And so we offer that service. Um, at our 50 Forward Knowles location out at the fairgrounds. And we're also about to open a pilot program in Williamson County at our Martin Center for 50 Forward Friends. So definitely something we are growing that program. That's great. And it's one of the reasons that I love 50 Forward because um, these are things that are hard to ask for. And so when you can kind of come into a system that is like, happy to see you and happy to offer help and support in really tangible ways, you know, like the friends program. Um, you know, this is where um, people move from surviving to thriving in these very important roles. You know, let's think about, for, for example, like what caregivers provide in terms of the economic impact to our country. You know, 20 hours a week of unpaid care you know, at $20 an hour, and we're talking about an extraordinary amount of service that people are providing in kind. Um, and I just want to kind of, I just want to applaud people for doing that. Um, it is a measure of a person's virtue, you know, to, to do this um, unrequited love uh, for individuals. Um, and it, I think it magnifies us as humans when we are able to give, um, but we have to give in ways that restore our cups, right? You can't pour from an empty cup. And here is a conversation about how to restore yourself. So including, including yourself, you know, iso caregiving is, it can be very isolating. And so there are some really interesting technologies that allow um, people who are otherwise unable to get out, ways to connect. This includes things like the Caregiver Action Network has a chat that you can sign into and log into and at least have um, conversations with others who are doing similar work. Shared experiences really can relieve burdens. Um, and then also there's, you know, increasing technology uh, related to the medical professions that allow you to connect with care teams so that if, for instance, you are struggling to recognize or identify the seriousness of something that your person is going through, that you have ways to communicate with care teams to get information. Uh, support. So this is definitely a slide worth contemplating. Um, caregivers, you don't want to get to the point of being burned out <laughs> um, before you take action. So you want to, um, if you recognize that you're in a caregiver role, even if you feel like you have some decent stamina there, you want to go ahead and start looking around for resources that can help you. So for instance, in your caregiver role, if you are working full time and then providing a significant amount of care, you might notice that you don't have time to exercise. So what are the ways that you can start to think about layering in regular care for your person so that you can accomplish those self-care um, needs? You know, taking care of yourself is not being selfish. That is actually being willing to stay involved because you won't fall apart. Um, accepting offers of help. You know, this is something that especially people in caregiver roles find really hard. Sometimes you have standards for the care that your person should have. And sometimes it's hard for other people to live up to your standards. Um, so being willing to train people, being willing to communicate in vulnerable ways, you know, to be, you know, like maybe you have siblings 
And when they come and take care of your people, your person or people, it, things fall apart a little bit, you know? And so just ha- being willing to have those hard conversations, um, you know, figuring out ways if you, especially if you need voucher help for respite care to just tap into it and don't feel guilty about arranging for that respite care. Um, watching out for signs of depression. So what does depression look like? Sometimes your only symptom of your depression is irritability. So if you find yourself really kind of just super cranky, just start to ask that question. And depression symptoms, you know, they don't mean that you immediately have to go out and get on a medication. Sometimes it's um, simply recognizing, um, inviting in respite care, taking a little time for yourself, and very frankly, um, just validating yourself, smiling at feelings of guilt for taking time off, and then just take the time off. Um, You know, steps to um, organize the work that you do to streamline it are also very good. And then making sure that um, that legal documents, in particular powers of attorney um, and uh, other medical decision-making tools or wills are up to date um, so that serious events don't amplify and compound the difficulty that you're already facing with some caregiver roles. You know, one thing I think often about with caregiving is typically you're giving care with the background of history. Right. And so let's say you're giving care to a parent with dementia and there's a lot of water under that bridge. And there may be things that happen in the caregiver role that trigger old conflicts to come up again. Um, And particularly when you have someone who's now cognitively impaired, you're not necessarily going to get to have that conversation or that resolution or healing that you would like. But these things can bring up big feelings in your role. Um, so just naming that and and seeking counsel, um, I think, again, looping back to the things like the chat functions in some of these caregiver support groups, um, those are venues of community where you can get some support in addressing feelings that are coming up. Um, There are a lot of barriers to good care, both for your person and for yourself. Um, Not Financial barriers notwithstanding can also just be time constraints. Um, You know, healthcare systems in general tend to be really hard and clunky um, when it comes to like having to take your person to appointments. The appointments often last longer than you think they will. Um, You know, traffic can be an issue. Good transportation mobility for your person, um, many, many things. And so luckily, I think through the pandemic, some of the barriers to good care have been dropped by our ability to do things like telehealth visits. Um, You know, and so when that exists as an option, you know, just if it appeals to you at all, um, maybe, maybe you would have to push your person in support of a need that you have, like, you know, hey, today a telehealth visit is going to be better for me than than having to drive you to an appointment where the traffic and, you know, other factors are going to make that, that trip take much longer than is av- available to me today. Um, so just naming that and, and really taking care of yourself. Um, engaging, you know, so this is an opportunity for us to kind of recreate our village. Um, finding community in the role that you have, allowing community if people are willing to help you, learning how to accept that help, and then being part of the community. So recognizing the power in the group to kind of amplify our energy and awareness. Um, We can find a lot of healing um, for ourselves and others when we figure out ways to connect um, and be be together. So I just want to thank everybody for this time and especially to Kelsey and Keith, because you guys have become part of my community and I so love um, that opportunity. Um, And then, of course, all of you, all of you who are watching, all of you 
the research program. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, this is a very heartwarming presentation. I've, I've really, really enjoyed this. And I, I love how you touched Dr. Neff on, um, you know, the, the joy of caregiving, you know, it, it can, all of the stressors that come along with it, you hear about that, but sometimes we don't always focus on, you know, this, this is giving love. This is caring for somebody you love. And it's an honor, you know, to be able to, to serve in that role. So um, very, very enjoyable conversation. And um, I would like to mention, we are also co-hosting a webinar, 50 Forward is, on November 17th at 3 p.m., also in honor of National Family Caregivers Month. And this webinar is um, with our national partners, the Network of the National Library of Medicine, and also the National Alliance for Hispanic Health. And it's going to be moderated by our chief program officer, Gretchen Funk. So very exciting, very informative webinar that I am looking very much forward to. And uh, we do have an Eventbrite link for that, for those of you that would like to RSVP. So we will be sure to drop that in the comment section. So you can grab that link and sign up. Please join us and you can learn more about caregivers with our webinar, Caregiving Today, a look at this vital role, role and what it takes. So wonderful. Um, and I know, Keith, you've probably got some questions. You're so great mm -hmm. with the questions. And I have a few too for Amy, if she's got a few more minutes. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Before, before we get to questions, I do want to mention our lovely Walk with the Doc that we have coming up next Wednesday, because this is another great opportunity to, to bring your loved one. If you are caregiving for somebody, uh, we meet every month on the second Wednesday mm -hmm. at Centennial Park at 10 a.m. And uh, we all walk around Centennial Park together, a nice casual mm -hmm. stroll. And uh, what do you want to add to that, Dr. Neff, about Walk with a Duck? Oh, gosh. You know, I just love it. It's such a precious time together. Um, no pressure. There, it's not a race, although we do have some fast walkers. We do. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, love, um, I love the opportunity to walk fast or slow. Um it's a time to share and um, we get some great stories going. Um, and then as all, as usual, it's always a time just if you had like a casual co conversational need that you would want to like pick the brain of a doctor or other caregiver, like that's kind of part of it. So um, I learn new things every time I'm there. Speaking of walk and, with the doc. Yeah, show that <laughs> I show. know. There we come, go. Yes. Come join us at Centennial Park. I, I really do enjoy those walks, Dr. Neff. Um, I look forward to them every month. And the people at 54 love them as well, too. So thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I've learned so much about doing things with others in this way that feel so uplifting. Um, you know, first of all, I mean, speaking of caregiver stuff you know one of the great joys of my life was getting to participate in my grandmother's care and I got stories and wisdom from her that I would have never gotten if I did not slow down and spend that time mm -hmm. um you know I hope that uh that by paying homage in that way I get to kind of get that back but in the meantime like when we are at uh at walk with the doc you know there's this vast reservoir of wisdom in the people that come and walk with us. And, you know, we are just getting um, showered mm -hmm. with these little juicy tidbits, which I love. Yeah, I love that yeah. too. And our, our 50 forward friends are often with us at Walk with the Doc. So I hope that they'll be able to join us as well on next week, next Wednesday, November 9th yes. is, is our Walk with the Doc. All right, Keith, yes. you got any questions for Dr. Neff? I took a ton of notes so yeah i have just a question too and i also want to give kind of like a quick uh statement too um so dr neff do you experience a lot of people who maybe feel burnt out from the caregiving mm -hmm. like is there mm -hmm. places for them or resources for them too as well 
So, so in the medical setting, when I talk with someone who's a caregiver, you know, there's actually a diagnosis code, it's called caregiver role strain. And, you know, one of the things that I feel like is really important is that we name that, you know, people who are caregivers are actually at greater risk for chronic illness. And, you know, there's a mixed bag to me in naming that because it can feel like, oh, well, I have to do this and it's actually hurting my health. You know, um, I want to kind of let like let the air out of that and mostly kind of circle back to um, when we recognize that we are overstretched and burned out. That's the invitation to look at accessing those tools. Mm-hmm. So if if the tool is simply I got to call Tennessee Respite Coalition and um, and get a voucher for a respite care or get that scheduled, you know, then that's that's what can be done. I think it's like linking with services. Typically when you're burned out or you're in that role and you can't figure a way out, you've got those blinders on. So you're not even aware that there could be some help for you. Yeah. It's that kind of like that spiraling in of like, um, you know, just overwhelmed that often limits people yeah yeah and um that's that's amazing that you say that and my grandmother um who passed away from cancer several years ago I didn't even realize that I was a caregiver at the moment Mm -hmm. like the term really kind of now is resonating with me because Mm -hmm. it was something that I didn't think about it was just my grandmother and I was helping her during her chemo process but now Mm -hmm. looking back on it you know I was really there for her and she you know, she was based in Chattanooga, Tennessee, but she came here to Nashville to receive her chemo treatment. And when she mm-hmm. would come up here, there were times that she would stay with me and my grand and my granddad, he would be as well. He would be here as well, too. But mm-hmm. it's, it's so amazing now looking back on it, how much time and effort goes into caregiving, like taking mm-hmm. her to the doctor's office for the chemo, making sure that she eats, then making sure she, we follow up with her to take her medication. So it was a lot. But it was Mm -hmm. so worth it, you know? Yeah, right. And, you know, and when you're doing that, Keith, especially as a younger person, um, so this is part of what the caregiver role strain starts to accumulate. You're missing dates with friends. You have things that you'd like to engage in, maybe creative efforts or work that would, you know, like uh, increase your livelihood. Mm -hmm. And you're having to make choices that kind of like take those off the table um, because you have love for this person. And, and in, in your heart space, you're like the best and highest use of my time and effort is this. And I'm missing this. Right. It invites like grief, right? Like you have to, you have to process those losses as a grief. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and you want to keep that, to yourself because you would never want the person you're giving care to, to think that, you know, that you're feeling like that, you know, there's, yeah. 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 It can feel so selfish. Like, Oh, I wanted to do this, but I can't. And and usually too, Dr. Neff with older people, sometimes they look at it as a burden, like, no, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm okay. I can do it. I can do it. So, but you know, deep down inside, like, Hey, you need some help and it's okay. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, I think kind of facing these things with open awareness and honesty, like, you know, yeah, I am going to make some sacrifices, you know, and if you can kind of link these choices to your values, like, you know, I value, you know, the ability to honor and respect someone who's like my ancestor, you know, um, and here's how I'm going to live into that value. I'm going to like make some choices and yeah, sure. I'm going to have to make some sacrifices. Like these words kind of get bandied around like they have no meaning, but this is what sacrifice means. It's like, I, I'm going to experience some pain sacrifice in order to do something that, that aligns with my values. And of course, actually that does really powerful things for your own well being. you know? Um, but you might have to really do some work to negotiate that it is aligned with your values. Um, if you're just deep in the thick of it and feeling like you're just losing out on everything, um, that that can get you a little bit off, you know, off compass 
in terms of awareness and values. And then I think the uns, the unspoken thing, I mean, I mentioned a little bit about financial resources, but we as a country expect people to do a lot of unpaid care um, and become financially vulnerable for people that are really, um, you know, there's just a lot of meaning attached to it. And I wish that there were more support for people going through tough financial times. You know, our system is imperfect. Um, we offer all kinds of like medical procedures and things that are really expensive and can make you feel like when we can't afford those for our person or ourselves that we're somehow diminished or lo losing out and, or we pay for something and it doesn't work. Um, I don't know, it's probably a larger conversation, but it, but it is a big piece of caregiver role strain, you know, mm -hmm. the Medicare donut hole. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a yes. new term for me, this caregiver role strain. That's, that's very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, you can say the words and feel them, can't you? Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's a yes. great, great word. Okay. All right. All right, Keith, I think we are pretty much ready to wrap up for today. Um, and again, our event was pre-recorded, so we can't take live questions. But if you do have a question and want to drop those in the comment section, we'll see if we can get um, an answer for you. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Dr. Neff, once again um, for this wonderful conversation for National Family Caregivers Month, um, such a vital role that so many uh, millions of Americans um, um, play out every day. And um, mm -hmm. if you want to learn more about the All of Us Research Program, um, you can visit our website at joinallofus.org slash 50 forward and learn how you can become one in a million with the All of Us Research Program. And again, just to reiterate, if you would like to learn more about resources for caregivers and caring for the caregiver, uh, be sure to register for our event that we are having on November 17th at 3 p.m. This is our webinar called Caregiving Today, a look at this vital role and what it takes. So we'll drop that Eventbrite link in our comment section as well and hope to see you there. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And we're going to show a quick PSA about the All of Us Research Program. And I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of the day. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million.